السلام عليكم السلام عليكم السلام Yes, we just wait for time to start, inshallah, and then we'll admit everybody. We've got five minutes. I'm just admitting everybody, all of you, and then probably we'll get started in another five. Once uh, Brother Suleiman comes in, then. I'm just holding the video for a while. You'll see me, inshallah. Right then. So everybody, Jazakullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. We'll get started in another two minutes, but very nice to see all of you here. Alhamdulillah. In fact, I wanted to open up the chat before we get started and get everybody in. That this session, Alhamdulillah, this is the fourth session we're doing. We have two more to start with. Uh, what kind of sessions would you like to hear after the Ramadan? Also, we're planning, inshallah, to start, continue the sessions after Ramadan. So Hikmah will have his beautiful uh, entire series, inshallah, all of you can be part of it. So just let me know what kind of sessions do you want to see. Jazakallah, Brother Suleiman. Good to see you, Alhamdulillah. So now I'm relaxed when Suleiman is in. So 
right, inshallah. So let me just read your comments and then let me add to it. Okay. Uh, you want to have quiz, Samir, inshallah, we'll have quiz. Football, okay, I love football myself. Uh, mashallah, sister, uh, the Aisha, in fact, some of you, prom I promised you to send the presentation last time. I could not because I didn't want to send on the group. Send me an email at daud at skyeducation.in and inshallah, I will send you all the presentations. This is all for sharing, right? Sira is something I would love and personally, I love to do a lot of Sira sessions, alhamdulillah. So I will share some of the pointers that you might want to discuss. We've got two or three topics, inshallah, once Hikma okays it. Yes, Umar will have quizzes in everyone, right? So I think uh, quiz is a part of what I do. I love doing the quizzes. I love doing the entire conversation around it. And we learn so much. You know, do you know, by the way, quiz is itself a sunnah of Allah, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet would quiz the Sahaba so much, he would ask that, which tree is about, uh, which tree is like a Muslim? And the Sahaba would think about the answer. Or uh, who would be the first person to enter Jannah? And Rasulullah has his own way. And I think when we do quiz, not only am I uh, doing the quiz for your fun or for benefit, and we are actually reviving one of the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Yeah, mashallah, Samir, am I, I am excited as well along with you. So some of the choices I gave was I could do a prophet series. And it's not like one uh, entire series on Prophet. One Prophet and we'll do a lot of it. So we could do a Prophet Ibrahim or Musa alayhi salam series and they're brilliant, mashallah, believe me. Or Yus Yusuf alayhi salam. Uh, so we'll start, yes, yeah, uh, we'll start with uh, the Prophets, then we can enter the Sira and then we can do Sahaba. Uh, tafsir of the Quran, uh, of course, I think they are ma far better equipped people to do that and, and I'll let Zaid by and others to do the Tafsir. We can also do something on the Hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa called Five Before Five. So Rasulullah said, take care of five before five. Like, sahatika qabla mamatika, hayatika qabla mautika, you know, life before death. So you can do a lot of these on that. In fact, you can do a series on the great uh, scholars of Islam also, like Imam Bukhari and Imam Shafi and, you know, Imam Muslim and Tirmidhi, that could also be a series. So share, inshallah, what you like to do in the series and we can get started about it. I'll probably just wait for a minute more. And then we'll, we can get started, inshallah. Just a minute and we'll start. Hold on to a minute. Have sabr for a minute and we are on the road. No, you cannot hear me because I was just uh, setting things up. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Was salatu salam Rasul al Kareem. Wa ala wa sabi mayin. Amma baad. Fa'udhu billahi minash shaitan ir rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now I'm sure you can hear me. You can start on. And let's get started, inshallah ta'ala, on Radiance of Ramadan, what I call the Connect the Dot series. And we took one small hadith and we're combining all the lessons around it. And this is my email address. Uh, so I call myself the Mindset Coach. I do a lot of psychology and counseling sessions, for, so especially for teenagers. And, you know, so we can have it. Uh, yeah, Omar, we would love to have a mentee. Perhaps maybe next session I'll prepare myself. This session is a little different from the others in the sense, again, Last time I saw a lot of curiosity when you all spoke and read about the reborn doll, isn't it? And this is what I try to do in the sessions that we try to combine a lot of knowledge around us. Uh, you know, see, I'm not so active on Insta, but good enough. I hope to now because you are following, I will be on Insta. That's Dawood Mindset. If anybody wants to follow me on Instagram. So, but life is not Instagram or instant coffee. And that is what we started with. We only started connecting the dots here. And today, again, we are going to a very simple concept of how do you connect itself? So the, remember the hadith was about the three men in the cave, uh, the three men who got stuck. And we started and spoke about one man only. One man who made a dua for, 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 to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to the parents. Yeah, uh, and we, we did the idea about if your parents try to adopt a reborn doll, which was creepy, like the Annabella that we spoke about, how would you feel like? 
subhanallah we move on today to another interesting topic today is is a mix of couple of topics and and we did a little bit of first session that a muslim cannot be bored lockdown does not mean life ends there's so much to do around it so here is a starting question for you something i would like to ask you how would you feel if you could disappear from the surface of the earth and nobody even cares or notices you now think about it for a moment uh think about it that you are nobody you know you feel that nobody cares for you nobody ya umar you feel sad or depressed amman jazakallah imagine if people thought you were absolutely useless and this is the word that you use right tragically depressive hamza as lot of graphical point to it yes subhanallah sami says can't bear it disappointing azan this is what i'm going to talk about there are people who are being ostracized ostracized means isolated they have been removed for it and this is a combination of three different topics i'm going to do with you inshallah you will learn a lot you will learn about the world and about some special muslims in the world and specifically i'm talking about how do you feel that nobody hears you nobody imagine imagine if you feel that even allah doesn't hear you and how does that thought come into it so i want to show you a picture just look at the picture and tell me where is this image from hold on this is a whole story of the hadith right so these are three people who are stuck in you see the rock coming in the big boulder coming in it has closed the mouth of the cave now now they feel that they can, nobody can hear them they feel they're cut off they feel they're isolated they feel that the world has ended with this particular thinking imagine if this is the thinking we are looking at they are feeling that they are worthless how does that feeling come in all right so here is a little image can you tell me where and when was this image taken interesting isn't it so go ahead and tell me i've just shared the screen where and when was this image taken and i'm getting some real good answers shouting in right now absolutely perfect it is this month's image of somebody says april is the lockdown image the entire makkah or the around the haram the kaaba is in the lockdown phase because of the corona now can you imagine in billy we trust me only time i've seen an image of the kaaba like that was when my grandparents perhaps when even before that when few people will still be around we have not seen an image of the kaaba like this ever before isn't it amazing isn't it surprising that we are looking at a kaaba image which is so strange and what happens there how do you see the kaaba like this yet yet remember brothers and sisters the same way i give an advice this is the most powerful say statement i'm going to say if you understand the statement there is nothing more you need to learn about what i'm going to say today you are not worshiping the kaaba you are worshiping the rabbul kaaba and the rabbul kaaba is al hayy al qayyum he was ever living he will always be living he is someone who does not need anybody the same way you are not worshiping ramadan you are worshiping Ram, rabbul ramadan rabbul ramadan is rabbul shaban is rabbul muharram is rabbul zulqaida is rabbul rajab is rab of all the months around sometimes we forget that allah is always there to listen to us isn't it amazing we are forgetting the very idea that the haram can be empty the corona can come in a quarantine everybody yet our lives are dependent on allah azza wa jalla not on the kaaba subhanallah inshallah i will do a history of kaaba some other time and explain to you that what if the kaaba is destroyed what happens then and we'll talk about this inshallah all right if possible i will share this inshallah perfect of we will talk about people worshiping at the kaaba hisham but very interesting so remember this word of allah's name asmaul husna this beautiful name of allah azza wa jal allah is as sami when nobody around you is able to hear you allah is able to hear you all the time isn't it amazing subhanallah you know when you get up from your ruku what do you say you say sami allah liman hamida sami allah the one who i bend for he listen to me i thank him this is the beauty of the word i'm looking at you are actually using the word sami allah in every raka of the salah you are reminding yourself allah is a sami you are telling yourself allah is listening to you i'll tell you a small anecdote a small incident which is very beautiful yes mashallah aisha k these are the names of allah that you love and i love these names alhamdulillah sabur al wahhab al basir basir is someone who can see from basara from the eye sight and allah is awwal and akhir the first and the last 
So there was an incident when an old woman comes to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she speaks in whispers. She complains to Rasulullah. And this is an incident in Surah Mumtahina. Right? Uh, Surah Mumtahina uh, is Mujadila. Yeah, the one who comes and complains to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about her husband. And Aisha Siddiq, and remember I always say Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was your age. She was a teenager when she married Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she had all the inquisitiveness, the curiosity of a teenager. So she started to look at the curtain and she starts to overhear. Yeah, she married at nine, but then she over, over the years she grew up. So now I'm looking at a teenage Aisha who's trying to overhear the conversation Rasulullah has with this old woman. And she's unable to hear because she's speaking in whispers. She's absolutely speaking. The old woman is speaking in really low tone. And then Allah answers the old woman from the seven heavens. And Aisha replies that I being so close. And the house is very small in Medina, right? Prophet's house was not a large house with six bedrooms. It was a small house. One, one small, uh, you know, a place to interface and a bedroom perhaps. And Aisha says, I could not hear the old woman and Allah as Sami from the seven heaven heard her. And this is the beauty of what I'm talking about. So today I'm talking about the three men inside the cave where nobody can hear. They are they're shouting and nobody can come to the aid, the rescue, yet Allah hears them. And this is a lesson we're talking about. There was a time in history when people were to told to go away from the deen, where people were told to move away from the deen just because they were different. You know, who you are or who are you is determined by what you think you are. Really, you can be a cat, but you think yourself as a lion. And there's a picture I always see of a cat seeing the mirror and she sees herself as a huge, magnificent king of the jungle, the lion. And really, you think you are. You know, you think yourself weak, you think yourself poor, you will become weak and poor. Subhanallah, this exactly you know, is self-esteem or rather the word I use is self-worth. Who you think you are. So I'll give you an example of two beautiful cases. For this, for him, his master's skin does not matter. You know, we're looking at animals and pets and a horse for that matter is the most loyal, faithful animal in the world. In fact, some researchers have gone on to say, yes, dogs and horses, but horses are more faithful than even dogs. And Allah Azawajal talks about this animal this beast of a creature, this magnificent animal in Surah Adiyat and many other places, Allah says, in the linsan And Allah talks about the beauty of Adiyat. Well, Adiyat is Abhan, Falmuriyat, Kadhan, Falmugayrat, Subha, Fasarnabi, Nakha, Fasatnabi, Jama. When the horses move, they are raising the storm, the cloud comes in, and a horse will not bother what the enemy is saying. The horse will just enter the battlefield. Any horse from the Muslim history, from the Roman, the Persian, the Greek history. You know, you should read about the Spartans, the way they would ride. Subhanallah, the horses do not fear for itself. But Allah says, Inna linsana li rabbi But look at insan. Look at the mankind. We are thinking twice. We are looking and doing conditions with Allah. We are making Allah azawajal, you know. We are kind of making a deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what I'm going to teach you today. You know, we are looking at people for whom the matter, skin did not matter. You know, today we have this, you know, sometimes it is very sad when I hear matrimonial ad which says a fair skin girl. Boys, this is a session for the young boys. Please do not look at the skin of a person. Squeeze, look at the, the bank balance of the person. Look at the dean of the person if you have to get into something. It could be business, not just marriage, but this I will take up two cases. I said today's session is made up of different case studies here. Today I'm going to take up two case studies of two amazing people, subhanallah, who changed the way we think about the world just by the way they thought, subhanallah, what, what they thought of themselves. Right? Uh, Omar, if my voice cracking, I'll be a little so, slower. So the first person I want to speak about is this man called Malcolm X. Malcolm X, or he was a black right activist in United States. And Malcolm was someone who saw the atrocities that the blacks were facing. America was a country where despite, despite all the advancement, they still thought that blacks are supposed to be slaves. They cannot be on top. There were different buses for the blacks. The, the same trams where the trams were flying or the buses when they're flying, the blacks will have to either stand or go behind and, and, and sit. They could not sit on the main front row. Subhanallah, Malcolm X joined a group called Nation of Islam. Now, Nation of Islam told, told themselves, and they had a philosophy, they, as Dr. Bilal says, they were anything to do but Islam. 
they were actually Muslim, he says. Why Muslim? Because they said all blacks are children of God, but all white are devil's children. Now, Nation Islam had this violent philosophy. They will not mind killing people. They will not mind doing racism. What the redheads did, the Nazis did against the black, they did against the white. There were a huge conflict between the tribe of Ku Klux Klan. You know, these people were they were called skinheads or redheads. And this Nation of Islam hated the whites. Even Malcolm X thought that way. Until Malcolm X goes to... Subhanallah, one of the most amazing journey in his life, he goes on to perform the Hajj. Remember, we saw just the image of the Kaaba, which is completely empty, right? We saw the image of the Kaaba, which is completely isolated. And here is an image of the Kaaba, which is filled with people. Subhanallah. Hold on. So we are looking at Malcolm X going to the Haram. And there he wrote a letter. And you should write letters. You know, we are talking about very early days. And he wrote a letter. For the first time in our life, I saw white share the shoulder with a black. I saw rich and the poor standing together. I saw a Chinese yellow with a European red. And I did not find any discrimination except the fact that they bowed down to one Lord, one Sajda, one Iman. And this is the religion I came with. He changed his name to Malik Shaban and he became a proponent of the true Islam. And this was what who Malcolm X is. Subhanallah, I'm taking you through these heroes because you have to learn about these people. Subhanallah, Hajj changed his life. And this is what I'm trying to tell you. Today, the Kaaba is empty. Today, the Kaaba is not there. That does not deteriorate your Iman even by an inch. You know, it does not change anything about my Iman. In fact, anything, it only increases my Iman because I start believing in the fact that we are worshipping the Lord of the Kaaba, the one who institutionalized, the one who started, the one who made the Kaaba, subhanallah. And yet, subhanallah, when people stand up for something, they will be, you know, challenged. The people of Nation of Islam hated Malcolm X so much that they assassinated him. By the age of 40, when he was about to be 40, they shot him, they killed him. Someone very similar, Martin Luther King, was also shot at the age of 40, subhanAllah. And isn't 40 called the age of prophethood? 40 is the age of wisdom. The Arabs used to call somebody a Rajul, a man only at the age of 40. Why was he assassinated, Samir? Because the nation of Islam felt that, you know, he is going against their philosophy and their popularity was decreasing. Nobody will start associating with them. He was very popular. Uh, Malcolm X actually has a movie, a uh, brilliant one, subhanAllah, portrayed by Denzel Washington, one of the top actors, alhamdulillah. These are something I recommend. I don't recommend to see the masala ones that you see, but this was amazing, mashallah. Very beautiful, Denzel Washington portraying Malcolm X, an amazing movie that we're talking about. So there he was assassinated for it. So the first hero that I wanted to introduce was him. And I'm only going to talk about the black right activist hero today. Just the fact, uh, just, just put Malcolm X uh, Grim, right? Grim Reaper. I like your name, by the way. SubhanAllah. You know, uh, so we have, you know, hopefully post Ramadan, I wanted to do a session on angels and demons. And maybe I'll have these characters come in in my session, inshallah. So we are looking at we are looking at a lot of these stories. The reason I'm telling you these stories is they just they stood up for something. They did not worry about who they were or how did they look like. Oh, my hairs are not straight. Oh, my skin is not white enough. Oh, I'm stuttering. Oh, my teeth teeth better. You 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 know you brush your teeth well. But they did not wait for them to start. Right. Let me go to my second hero. This is another hero from a different world, but again, a black right activist. And then I'll come back and I'll ask you my own way, inshallah. So we will do a little quiz. This time again, a quiz is more like a case study. All right. So we are now, this is exactly where we are coming to the, the hadith of the three men in the cave. What are they telling each other? Nothing. Nothing can save us from this rock, but invoking Allah Azza wa Jal from the righteous deed we have done. Malcolm X and the one I'm going to talk about now, they have done something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They stood up for what they believed in. It is said, another beautiful quote I want to talk about today is if you stand for nothing, you will fall for everything. Right? You know, you are, you are in a college and somebody offers you a cigarette. You stand for nothing, you will take it up. But if you stand for something, you might be challenged, but you will be firm. You know, as they say about Rasulullah sallallahu first they will oppose you. Then they will challenge you. Then they'll fight you. Then they will join you. Isn't it amazing? First, they will challenge you. The Makkans challenge Rasulullah. Then they will oppose you. They said you are wrong. Then they'll fight you. The Badr, the Uhud, the Khandak. 
then they will accept you or they will join you. These are the people who did something amazing. And my second hero today is someone even more, mashallah, popular than Malcolm X. And he is the best black history in the world. Yes, you know, it's all about, isn't it amazing? I love the word that you put, respect. I love your language. The teenage lingo is beautiful. Ali, yes, Farhan. I love the way Farhan put it. Mo Ali, well, he didn't call his a Mo Ali, but it's Muhammad Ali. That's Mo Salah. All right, Umar Salah, right, inshallah ta'ala. Muhammad Ali, the greatest, the greatest sportsman across history. You know, it, he's better than Don Bradman, Roger Federer, Iram, you are right. He's the GOAT, right? What is GOAT? What does GOAT stand for? Greatest of all times. I love the way the teenagers, the young people, and all of you, whatever age you are, your language is beautiful. And I'll, Umar, I'll come to the Cassius Clay part of who Boxer Ali is, as Muhammad Mahdi says. Now, Muhammad Ali was not just an ordinary boxer. Boxing is supposed to be a very cruel, brutal sport, right? He made the whole sport acceptable to the world. By the way, subhanallah, you know, there is a, there is a hadith about not hitting on the face, but we'll not get into the thick of it. We are looking at the people who do stand for something, right? Subhanallah, Muhammad Ali was a strategist. Strategist because there is a quote associated with him. Subhanallah, Zubayda says he built 170 mosques in the United States alone. Allah, Allah accepted from him and thank you so much. I did not know that. They're so amazing, right? Acronym uh, Imran, uh, Iman is good, greatest of all time. Yes, Rasulullah used to wrestle, so fantastic. So we have the hadith which says the two young sahabas used to wrestle. Yunus, can you tell me the name? Uh, it's a quiz for you. Two young boys who wrestled. Not sure. It's not Umar, it's Sumara bin Jundub. All right. It's Sumara bin Jundub and a Rafi. So these are Sahabas. Yes, Subhanallah. Now, Muhammad Ali was supposed to use strategy. He will defeat the enemy even before the enemy will come in the ring. By the way, the ring is a square field, right? It's called ring, but it's square. Such a boxing trivia that I love to talk about it. And he will, you know, one, one, one day somebody said that, Muhammad, I fought with you in my, in my dream. So Muhammad Ali replied to him in the press conference, you better apologize because I defeated you there also. Somebody said, Muhammad Ali, I do shadow boxing. And Muhammad Ali would say, yes, this is called mental mindset. I'm your mindset coach, right? He would say, remember, I defeated you. Your shadow can defeat you. You don't even need me. George Foreman, George Foreman was supposed to be the greatest boxer of his time. It is called Rumble in the Bronx. That boxing ring is called Rumble in the Bronx. And George Foreman was supposed to be someone who used to punch a lot. For seven rounds, Muhammad Ali stayed away. You know, he did not let him touch. George Foreman got frustrated. In the eighth round, Muhammad Ali goes and says, now it's my turn. And he did a knockdown. In the eighth round, he defeated him, knocked down. That is what Muhammad Ali was. The quote is, he, he stings like a bee and floats like a butterfly. That's your Muhammad Ali. That's the idea I'm talking about. So what about it? What is so great about Muhammad Ali, right? He's a brilliant sportsman. What about him? Subhanallah. It was 1960s. Muhammad Ali has just won the Olympic gold medal in, in the Berlin Olympic or the Rome Olympic, 1960 Rome Olympic. And then he loved the medal so much that, yes, yes, Hamza, yes, stings like a bee. He used to even sleep with the medal on. You know, I sometimes bring the medal to show you how amazing it is. One day he goes to a restaurant with the medal on. And there's a string. United States, America, 1961. Okay, and they don't allow him in the restaurant. They tell him, Mr. Ali, you cannot come because blacks and dogs are not allowed inside the restaurant. What? Blacks and dogs, 1961, United States of America? SubhanAllah, Muhammad Ali so hurt, so hurt, he takes the medal, the medal he loved so much, he threw it in the Ohio River. He threw it in the river. SubhanAllah. Yes, Fazil, he used to keep matchbox in the pocket to remember the hell. Wallahi lazim. I love the way you are putting Fazil. Something amazing. And he threw the medal and, and then he said, I don't want a medal which cannot respect me, the country which cannot respect me. And then, alhamdulillah, he fought for the activism. He, he fought against United States' decision to go to Vietnam. Four years, he lost all his best practice time, the best youth time. But when Allah, what is the man tasha, what is zillo man tasha. You know, two names of Allah that are very, very dear to me is al Muiz and al Mudhil. You know, jisko Allah is there, who can take that away? The one who Allah gives Izza, so Allah blessed him with Izza. In fact, George Bush called Muhammad Ali in the Atlanta Olympics 1996, where he did the mashal. So the Olympic mashal, the Olympic torch, Muhammad Ali, subhanAllah, he lit the mashal. 
And these are activists I want to talk about. Of course, Muhammad Ali died because of the Parkinson disease, because of all the blows he got on his head. But these are the heroes who stood for something. My brothers and some of you who are out there, the sisters, wherever you are, the recording will be there. What are you standing for? What is that one cause you're standing for? It could be an animal right activism. Anything that Islam teaches you, it could be environmentalism. Right, subhanAllah. And this is what I'm asking you. So first part of the case study where two heroes, I hope you enjoyed it. Tell me at least three great heroes from the Muslim legacy from Prophets and Companion. All right. So everybody's telling me, Bilal, you know, Muhammad Ali died because of the Parkinson disease. It's a disease that comes in where your hands start shaking. Learn a lot more about it. Yes. So I got Bilal, which is the most common answer. Tell me a very popular black prophet. That's a tough one, right? Okay. From the Sahabas, yeah, Osama bin Zaid, Jazakallah, the one Ilam I think you mentioned. Ashraf, fantastic. Rayan, you are the first one to say it is Musa alayhi salam. Julaibib, Sayyid. Wow, I love the answer. All right. And one character, which is very, very unlikely, you may not have heard of this character, as in he's a black man, is Lukman Hakim. All right, Lukman. Lukman, Surah Lukman, chapter number 31 of the Quran. So just a few histories, you know, it's a little quiz or a little uh, knowledge, FYI for you, right? Another acronym, those who know, I know you know what FYI stands for. So Musa alayhi salam, right? Musa alayhi salam, yeah, I'll tell you about Lukman Ashraf, so it's interesting. Musa alayhi salam, Rasulullah described him as a tall, black, handsome man, right? Rasulullah, where did he see him? In Miraj, when he was... You know, traveling, Musa was praying. That's a hadith we know about. Bilal, everybody knows Bilal. What's the connection of Bilal and the Kaaba? Yes. Yes, you all know, mashallah. Absolutely. So, right, Habib. <laughs> I'll say, assalamu alaikum, Habib. Yeah, you can just answer. Not just the Adhan of the Kaaba. Bilal stood on the Kaaba and gave the Adhan, isn't it? So, that means that we don't really worship the Kaaba. Kaaba is a black stone or a black uh, edifice, a structure for us. But Bilal, mashallah, Allah respects him and Allah gave him the the Izza so much. Lukman Hakim, he's definitely a black man, but some people strangely call Lukman as also the Aesop. You know, remember the Aesop fable? Uh, Allah Alam, we don't know, one scholar did mention about it, that the Aesop fable, the, the grapes are sour and the, and the thirsty crow and the hare and the tortoise, the stories, they say the Lukman and Aesop were the same people, but yes, Aesop fable or Aesop was also a black African slave. So that's the word, that's the lesson I'm teaching you here, you've got it. So five Activist of five heroes we learned about, and some of you did give you a lot of other names from Julaibib and uh, Subhanallah Zaid bin Harith and Osama bin Zaid. But we learned about today's hero, we learned about Malcolm X. I spoke about Martin Luther King. Last time I spoke about Nelson Mandela and Barack Obama. We are learning about new people, and Muhammad Ali, one of the greatest. And mashallah, we learn about Musa and Bilal and Luqman. May Allah be pleased with these sahabas and the, and the heroes we're talking about. Good. So far, so good. We're almost in half of the session with you. Are you enjoying? Are you learning? Can you quickly, two or three people, can you tell me one lesson, one learning that come out of it? Mashallah, and I'll open it for public and I'll move ahead. Tough, yeah? Speaking so much in Ramadan. Yeah, in Mumbai, our, our Ramadan iftar time is 7 7, so I still got a time. Self esteem, Jazakallah, don't give up, no racism. All of you can read what he's saying. Always stand, Lukman, yes. Lukman, wow, I love the name. We just spoke about you, right? Always stand for something. Allah, as a Sami Hamza says, yeah, Subhanallah, stand up for your face. And this is what we're talking about. We are looking at if you don't stand for anything, you will fall for everything. That's the, that's the lesson. Yeah, Raihan, we, we don't worship the Kaaba, we are equal. Brilliant. Jazakallah khair. Let's move ahead. And now let's look at let's look at another perspective. Uh, sorry if I can't read all the chats, but I'll go to a new topic, a smaller case study. This is a case study, so I'll ask your opinion, inshallah, like the uh, reborn dolls. But this is a very interesting one. Your point of view. What I mean by point of view is, for example, today we are still looking at fair skin as a right one. We're still looking at, you know, how do people look, what car they drive. But perspectives can be so different. I'm going to show you in these two images and I'm going to ask you a question. All right. Simple question. And uh, you know, so teenage counseling, you can just send me an email and I'll help you around it. So what we'll do is you have to tell me what is what. And you know, when I do one, inshallah, you'll understand it. I don't want to confuse you with a lot of theory into it. Simple as that. Right. So you see two football jerseys. Right. First question is, which nations are these jerseys? So absolutely simple. Right. Which nations are we talking about? 
Bang, they out there. Muhammad is the first person to say, yeah, Umar says both the answers and all of you gave the answer. It's the South American rivals, very bitter rivals like India, Pakistan that way. Argentina and Brazil only think they don't share the border. Now tell me if there was an Argentina-Brazil match, Messi and Neymar, I like the way you say it, but you know, they're two very different generations. Oh yeah, Messi and Neymar is absolutely correct. Uh, Maradona and Pele will be different generation. Which one is a hero and which one is a villain? They have the same numbers. Yeah, by the way, number 10 is very popular. So, hero is Brazil and villain is Argentina, Umar says. Why, Umar? Argentina is, some people say Argentina is a hero because Messi is a part of Argentina. They do share the border. Hashir Jazakal, I stand corrected. I will check it up. Umar doesn't like Messi. So, they are, so one is a hero, one is a villain. Now, this is poor perspective, right? So, so there you are, uh, Ronaldo's come in, we had Ronaldino, uh, someone, some of you, uh, you know, may know. Now the fact is, one of you, if you are a Brazilian, imagine if you're from Brazil, you will say Argentina are the villain. But if you are living in, uh, what's the capital of Argentina, by the way, quick ones. Fazil, yeah, Brazil had a lot of slave trade and they had the first original slaves in South America. Uh, Buenos Aires, Amman is right there, Muhammad, he beat you, but fantastic. Buenos Aires, so if you're living in Buenos Aires, for you, it could be the Brazilian who are the villain. And this is what I call the perspective. Subhanallah, there is no villain and there is no hero out there. It could be anybody. Today, the way we see the world, we sometimes see a Muslim and we say only Muslims are good. It's a perspective because we belong to a community. And I want you to broaden your perspective. Like the same way, white people, their perspective was so narrow, narrow that they thought that the blacks are not worthy of it. Today, some of the best sporting athletes, some of the best brain and the world's best president, at least until now, yeah, is was Barack Obama in the recent time. Why? And they all are black. Your color of skin has nothing to do with your heart or your mind. The same way you change your perspective a little. So let me do a little game here. And then after the game, we'll, we'll talk about it, inshallah, right? Opinions can change. It's the ability to listen. As-Sami, Allah is one who listens. Allah wants you to listen. That's why you've got two ears and only one tongue or one mouth. All right, guys, this is a good one for you. Which one is play and which one is work for you? So you're a little baby with you. Is that a play or is that a work? And you're a laptop or a, or a desktop or a, or a mobile. Which is a work and which is a play? All right, so you have to write down. Okay, work is baby. Computer is play. Baby is play. Of course, baby is play, right? Both are play. No, no, I will not do cheating this time. One will be play, one will be work. Again, I'm getting so much of perspectives, right? Depending on who you are. And that is the perspective that you're getting. Subhanallah. Ask any mother. Ask any mother. And definitely what answer you will get. Baby is work, isn't it? No, baby is not play. And laptop is, is, is play. But for most of us, you know, coo -coo -coo -coo, we cuddle the baby, we enjoy a little time when the baby is poo poo or baby wants you know, milk, we say, Mama, take care of the baby, my work is over. SubhanAllah, again perspectives, again perspectives, very interesting series of these are, you know, so for, for you, this could be the one, but for someone else, it is absolutely different, depending on who you are. For, for a lot of us, or a lot of us, babies play, work, play. Yeah, I enjoy playing with my daughters, but laptop and mobile phone is work. We do that as well, isn't it? So it depends on perspective, who you are, what you're thinking. It's just an idea. It's There are no right and wrong answers. Whatever you said is not, that's why you see, I put all the four images. There is no right and wrong sometimes. Very important lesson I'm giving you right now. Okay. Uh, you enjoying this case study? Can I go ahead? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to open it now, inshallah, the chat so that everybody can see everyone. It's interesting because alhamdulillah, I'm seeing you all really uh, take a lot of, uh, so you can now next time when you write, you can say everyone. So sometimes, you know, you, others can read your chats also. There you are. All right. Who is a leader here and who's a follower? Remember, I'm talking to you, the youth of today. I'm supposed to be talking to 12 to 14 and 22 year old. Who is a leader and who's a follower? The one with a ragged jean or one with a suit and a tie? So the leader you say is the one in the suit, right? The leader is the first image, second is the follower. All right, so Amman is becoming very philosophical, dressing doesn't decide it, fair enough. Suit is a leader, or oh, Zaman, Erthurul is a leader. Okay, if everyone, there's enough vote for Erthurul, I'll do Erthurul quiz next time, inshallah, all right? I'll do it after Ramadan rather. I have, a, I have an entire problem, my daughter helped me with an Erthurul, and we'll do one, inshallah, ta'ala, of the son of Suleiman Bey. The coat, the suit, yes, subhanallah, we will do that. Let's see. And again, it's perspective, isn't it? Today, work from home. 
you know, some of us, you know, I'm, I'm just wearing a khandoon with a Friday, but even if I wear a t-shirt and come, it doesn't matter. We are all in the home. We are just sitting there. So what, what, what you wear also depends on where you are. For example, Mark Zuckerberg is supposed to be wearing just, you know, flip-flops and a t-shirt. Steve Jobs just wore a black turtleneck and a jeans. But Bill Gates is always dressed up in a suit and a tie. Donald Trump always wears only one color tie, right? Donald Trump's color of the tie is always red. Yes, Nihal. And uh, Barack Obama's tie was always? Yeah, Fauzan, everyone? Blue. Oh, brilliant, mashallah. So you are noticing a dress. You see, how you dress does make an impression. Subhanallah, you know, I have a brother who runs a shop called Mashru with his kanduras and I love the brother. The very fact that they're helping the, the artisan, the tailors, it is something very important. So today, if you, are, if you are planning to do an Eid shopping, go ahead and do some kind of shopping like that. Buy a, a kandura fahad. You know, you're helping people and you're also creating a culture around it. The only dress that is important is subhanallah, an open mind. Come with an open mind. Some dresses may not be acceptable to us. For example, you know, uh, uh, yeah, so, you know, Samir, yeah, thank you for putting some messages in private, but we don't endorse anybody criticizing anyone. So there you are. But some of us, kandura is a thob, Hamza, a, a thob. Uh, like the Arabs wear a thob. Oh, I should hold on, hold on. There you are. Can you see this? <laughs> oh, that's for Hamza. All right, sorry. So, so you are, Raymond is a complete man. Nihal, yeah, I like that perspective. Uh, you know, in Scotland, in Scotland, people, uh, men wear, wear skirts. Strange, right? But, you know, you can't just criticize them and don't accept them because that's the culture. You accept some people's culture and, and backpies. Yeah, that's the Scottish people, right? Okay, let's move on to some other perspective and then we'll, we'll take a close on what we are trying to do. All right, which is junk and which is healthy? All those big, what is that? Big, big, big whooper? Big whooper? Is that big whooper? The beef one? Oh, Big Mac is one. Yeah, what's the whooper one? Oh, the giant whooper. All right. Burger is healthy. Yeah, I like the teenage answers, but burger is junk. Most of you are saying burger is junk. I don't know if, you, if you'll still take veggies over burger, but believe me, both can be amazing. I think that's why I love Subway so much. Again, perspective. Again, perspective. You know, my daughter does not like fish. And I always tease her that the first food that you'll get in Jannah is, is fish. Specifically, the first food in Jannah you will get his fish, right? Yeah, Umar burger can be healthy as well. I ad admit and accept it. So I tell her that, inshallah, you will, Allah will put the taste in you when you go and enter Jannah. Khuli fi ibadi, wad khuli jannati. Allah says, oh, enter, my, enter my, my paradise. So it's a perspective that you're getting. Some of you know, today morning I was doing a teenage session and we had a session on strange creatures and we had our octopus. You know, octopus are blue blood, by the way. And they've got eight hearts. Amazing. Oh, sorry. They, they've got eight, nine brains and, and three hearts. So we said, do you like octopus? And somebody said, yuck. And I said, octopus is a halal. Absolutely. They're like chewing gum, but you can eat them and you may not like it, but it's perspectives. But don't eat bad. That's where the corona came from, right? Okay. Where am I taking you here is this. This is where the crux of what I'm going to convey to you. Is this a fashion? Or is it faith? What do you think? Of course, this... Is this fashion of faith? What am I seeing? All right, the answers are flying thick and answer. Hold on, the moment I don't see, I, I can see. Depends, unknown, fashion, faith, yes, opinions change. Now you're getting what I'm perspective, I'm telling you. Uh, this is a bird's nest. Yeah, Imran, absolutely. I should have got a more halal looking beard, isn't it? Right, I didn't get a PNG image here. It's both fashion and faith, absolutely. So, you know, when I was in college, and subhanAllah, uh, I will just hold on to your, to your comments now so you can concentrate on what I'm speaking to you. Uh, when I was in college, it was very, very challenging when you keep a beard. You say, why are you keeping a beard? You're young and it is not important for you to have a beard. And until today, you see today the heroes and the sports stars and, and the celebrities are sporting a beard. But the fact, yes, the fashion which turns sunnah, the sunnah which turns the fashion. And when Messi keeps a beard, everyone wants to keep a beard. Isn't it subhanallah? When, when Virat Kohli wants to keep a beard, everybody says, oh, beard's cool now. And everybody's having a beard that they want to do it. But if you're Nia, and you see, you can still have a fashion sense, but if your Nia is because you kept it because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam did it, or I didn't know Hamza about Meshi clean staining himself, maybe he has no other work in the pandemic, so he's doing that. But yes, I think the sunnah, it will never be outdated. That's the perspective. The sunnah will never go out of fashion. Remember that. You know, people may come, tomorrow there'll be a goatee, right? It does not matter. 
I don't care. Arthurul has a beard. That's fun, inshallah, Taala, isn't it? So it could be one of the actors, one of the heroes. Anybody can keep a beard. But the point I'm talking about it is, we love the beard because the sunnah. If people enjoy it, if it's a fashion, alhamdulillah, it's a bonus point for us. But even if people were to criticize us, even if people were to not like us, that's absolutely okay. Samir, sorry, I did not hear you, but but fair enough. It's absolutely okay, inshallah. The idea of this is conversation, right? So beards are always awesome, right? Subhanallah. So enjoy your beards. You know, make a niya. The very fact that you all are young, some of you, mashallah, don't have to, you know, just pull yourself and shave for the niya. But the fact that you put a niya for the beard, yeah, this is a Santa little boy out there. The fact that you make a niya having a beard, Allah will make you beautiful. Uh, there's a hadith that there's a dua that I love so much. You know, dua they say when you see the mirror, of course, Allah uh, hassan ta khulki wa husn khalaki. Allah, you made me beautiful, make my character beautiful. The fact that you have it, inshallah, Allah will give you the ajar for it, and that's what you do. In fact, last Ramadan, last Ramadan, I did a series with my youngest daughters, uh, Jumpy Jewelry and Zingi Zainab, called 12 Scientists with Beard. And it was so interesting, you know. I just went across Avicenna and Khwarizmi and Mendeleev, and, and I think it was Galileo. All those scientists who had beard, it's a small series for the younger one. So you can, you know, download that from Sky Education TV if you like it. But the fact that you're talking, as Sister Aisha says so beautifully, it's your niya. Innamal amalu bin niya, right? Mashallah, yes, Nihal, you are Jamal because you have a beard. Rasulullah used to dye his beard. Okay, subhanAllah, that's absolutely okay. Yeah, Albert Einstein didn't have a beard. Fair enough. But the fact that beard enhances you. By the way, by the way, a research says that beard makes you look more attractive and more intellectual. Mashallah, nice for the beard. You know, it depends. You know, do not get into the thick of it, how long, how not. The niya is important and get into it. But don't judge people if they don't have it also. Very important. You know, subhanAllah, exactly, Imran. Good enough. Just because you have a beard does not make you good. All right, subhanAllah. So, you know, Charles Darwin had a beard and I don't endorse his entire philosophy, right? So a lot of people may have a beard, just, just the beard. You know, your, your, a famous character from Bangalore has a beard. Just, you know, it's, it's a perspective I'm giving you. Subhanallah. Because a lot of people in Turkey, they don't grow a beard. And you can come and say, oh, you're not following the sunnah, you're bad. No, don't do that. Otherwise, my entire session is wasted if you start giving critical feedback. You know, there was a sister the other day on the Facebook she sent a message that watching uh, Arthurul in Ramadan is not Ibadah. And I, you know, I, I, I do join in and I, so I said, sister, one important point is writing and using Facebook in Ramadan, somebody say that's also not Ibadah. So stop saying and judging others. Stop being a critic. Stop being self-righteous. Stop telling people what they are good or what they are not good, right? Hashid, that's exactly the point. Just having the idea of accepting something for yourself. You know, world starts with you. Start implementing what I'm saying with yourself. I may have so many mistakes, but that's the point. I'm not here to correct the world. I'm here to improve myself. Good enough? Are we good on the beard? Okay, another very interesting stats here. Right? Is having mustache fine on, on beard? No, Umar, that's not a question. Beard is a sunnah, right? Subhanallah. Jazakallah, Umar and Azan. Interesting. Good to see. Okay, I'm going to show you a picture. Identify who she is. Right. Who is she? I know you all will be shooting your answers. You know her, don't you? <sighs> Today I'm really, really tired. Yeah? Tired, shouting so much. No idea. No idea. Okay, Lukman's right. Jazeer is right. Arshad's right. Tell me your name as well. So a lot of you wrote A.R. Rahman's daughter, and that's the right answer. Farhan, that's the answer. Farhan gave the first one. It is A.R. Rahman's daughter. And her, how, how, yeah, Ashraf, how should you know? Ashraf, you know, it is so strange. It's a very popular image on the, on the net. You can see the brothers and you can identify Ashraf. I don't want to see the sister in the naqab there. But again, there was a huge hue and cry over the sister Khadija where she chose to wear the naqab. That's about it. Perspective again, isn't it? Sometimes we are critical. Is it halal? Is it jai? Is it is compulsory? Is it wajib? Is it not? I'm not here to do that. I'm absolutely okay, subhanAllah, with your perspective. Look at A.R. Rahman. I don't endorse A.R. Rahman for the music or whatever. But yeah, you know, that's exactly how critical we're becoming. The moment I put A.R. Rahman, you are critical. And that is what I want to say. Stop judging others because we are the one who are to be the first person who is standing before Allah as a world to be judged. You know, now her father is a musician. She's not complaining about it. A lady, yes, she criticized. A lady criticized her for wearing the burqa or the naqab. And 
Subhanallah, Ya Rahman said, I endorse it and he has two daughters, one don't wear, one wear it. But that's the point I'm talking about, brothers and sisters. We are becoming so critical of others and this is what I'm talking about. So what is hijab, the nakhab? Is it modern? Is it outdated? Or is it your identity? What do you think? All right. Identity, wonderful, modern, wonderful. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Everything? Absolutely. By the way, that also is in tune. It's a fashion. All right. Stop being critical of what burkhas people wear. Do they put a brooch around? I've got three daughters. I know what colors are. How much matching has to go in. The point is your haya is in your eyes and here. Your haya is here. Some of us may have covered ourselves with hijab, but most of them cover their brains with hijab. And that is a sad part of it, including a Muslim. We have become very, very critical, very, very judgmental. As I said, Aisha, well, the opinion matters here. Well, to me, no, it's not. It's not compulsory. But again, who am I to judge? When somebody comes and says compulsory, I say, this is your opinion. Thank you about it. But I'm okay with somebody not wearing it. Right? Yeah, Hamdan is talking about the mask. Well, I'll not even use the, that as a joke because I think it's very sad. The pandemic has hurt everybody, including the poor, the migrant. So, well, not enough. It's very interesting trivia, very interesting fact about it. So, France, some years back, put a ban on the Nakhab. Now, that is very sad because when you call yourself a modern country, you can't do something like that, isn't it? So, France said, anybody who wears a Nakhab in the public, we're going to find them. There was a very rich French businessman, yes? And he said, I will pay the fine, what he calls the Nakab fine. Fazil says 2004, fair enough. It's almost a 15 years back, mashallah. And I wanted to quiz you on the name of this, this businessman. Does anybody know the business? Zaman, the 2011? Why? You know, it is their culture. They suddenly had a problem and there were a lot of, you know, uh, there were kind of terrorist activities that they wanted to curb it. But the point I'm putting across to you is what is your identity? So, subhanallah. And who said it? Who is this French businessman? His name is a French name, very nicely spell him, right? You will pronounce it Rashid Nakes, right? It's written this way. He set up a million euro fund dollar for sisters to wear nakab, and he said, I will pay the fine. And the French government realized this is really bad. By the way, France has a lot of Arab visitors and tourists coming in. They stopped coming in, and when economy is hit, they started saying, We'll not put a fine on the nakab ban. So they don't have a ban right now, I believe. But you can check it up. But the point is, this man stood up for something. Rashid Nakiz stood up for something. The idea is, who are you standing up for? You, you, are you are a voice of the weak? You can blog. You can tweet. You can write it down. But don't try to rant. Don't try to criticize. Some of us have become very critical of the government. And we always poke fun at it. No, I don't endorse it at all. Mashallah, I, I, I like some of the areas. I like. So idea is, what are you doing? Subhanallah, you know, when somebody criticized Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I saw people burning buses and buying the book of satanic verses. All I did was went to every school which invited me, every college which could invite me and spoke about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muslims, non-Muslims, every faith. And said, understand how amazing this man is. This personality, you'll fall in love with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Without having a Twitter, he has a billion, two billion followers. Without having any followers on Twitter, there's Subhanallah. And this is what we're looking at. So this is what perspective brings us with. This is an idea. Do not let anybody judge you and do not judge others so easily. So next time you see anybody criticizing, you know that there is a point of view you might have missed. The point of view of the beard, of the junk food, of the, all the things we spoke about, of work and play. That is my favorite part, by the way. What is work and what is play? And this is a lesson in the second session I'm going to give you. And I have one more sake, inshallah ta'ala. Right, Zaman, again, we don't take individual names and we criticize or like them. Some people whose views are very, very heretical, you avoid it. You don't like it, you stay away from them. SubhanAllah, that is what I will always tell you about. Fair enough? You know, what I always tell was Zaman asked, I don't name the individual, but Zaman, remember the hadith of Ayat al Kursi. Rasulullah said, if even Iblis, even if Shaitan teaches something which is right, accept it. So there you are. Good enough. Second session was interesting. Did you enjoy? Did you learn something? We've got another 10 minutes and we'll close with the final session, which hopefully will be as uh, Jazakallah, everybody, Zaman, Yunus, Umar. It's always nice to see. Okay, whatever they tease you with the character or the bullying, probably I'll take you in my next session on that part, inshallah. Barakallah Feek, let's go to the last part of today. And this is a question to you. Which surah is called Surah Al-Tawheed? 
No, there is no surah by the name like that. What surah is called surah al tawhid? There is a little sun coming on my way. So I'll do this. All right. One, two, three answers flashing right there. Okay, I'll let some more answers come in. I'm sorry. Okay, it's surah al ikhlas, surah al tawbah, surah al fatiha. None of these. None of these, mashallah. I like the way when you give wrong answers. If I miss any answer, repeat it. Surah al tawbah, no. Surah al fat. I like the answer, surah al fat. No, it's not fatiha, rahman, taha. There you are. Somebody said Farhan. Farhan got the answer right. Bang there. Not Surah Al Kahf. Not Surah Al Mulk. Not Surah Al Waqia. Mashallah. By the way, your Surah knowledge is very good. All of you guys, I'm very impressed. Alhamdulillah with the kind of Surahs you're telling me. So here is your answer. Only one person said it. Uh, surah Al Bakra. Always go with Surah Al Bakra or Surah Al Bayyana because the longest Surah. You might always hiss it. Sorry uh, if my voice was breaking down. Fair enough. Which surah was this, Farhan? It is Surah Al Kafirun. Surah Al Kafirun is called Surah Al Tawheed because this was a test of Rasulullah Tawheed, isn't it? It was a test. Oh, Imran, it was right up there, isn't it? Yeah, it happens all the time. Uh, or, or, or a phenomenon called Deja Vu. You know what's Deja Vu? Deja Vu is, I knew this was going to happen. We'll talk about Deja Vu in a session on jinns and shaitans, okay? After Ramadan only. So right now it's all the time of the angels and well Malaika the Ru coming down. What is so beautiful of Surah Al Kafirun is Allah was challenging. Allah was asking a question and 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 Rasulullah was was being uh, given options. Negotiation was going on and Allah says no. Lakum dinukum Let me see if I can stop the screen and share this with you. Uh, it is always nice to you know do some kind of sharing. If I can, I will play. Inshallah. Usually last time it did not play well. But let me still try it again. All right. Hold on, everybody. Just a minute. So I'm just... This surah, you know the surah, but it's always nice to hear it when we can play it again. Let me see if I can play it for you. Uh, I think no, we can't hear it, brothers. Bismillah, Right there, mashallah. Which who was the Khari brothers? Yeah, there is the answer. Okay. Sheikh Mishari Rashid Al Efasi. Mashallah, I think you all you all did you not enjoy the surah? It's beautiful, isn't it? Uh, I will play one more video for you, inshallah, if I can time permits. Anybody has a question, ask me. But yes, Afasi, but this is the surah I was talking about. Such an amazing surah. This surah is also called the axe. Or I call it the axe effect, right? Not the axe which sprays around. Because this surah divides the truth from the falsehood. And this is what we are looking at, subhanAllah. We are looking at, uh, no fiqh questions, Zaman. Uh, I, I'm not a fakhi, you have to go to hikmah for all the fiqh questions out there. The beauty of it is, this surah tells you your principles. The way Allah has put it so beautifully. You know, I don't worship what you worship and you will not worship I'm calling you to worship. Yet, yet, I'm going to maintain a decorum. I'm going to maintain a respect. I'm going to say, Lakum deenukum waliyadeen. The point of view perspective, while you are very clear on your tawheed, you're very clear for the principles you stand for. You're very clear about Islam. You're very proud of your religion. You're very sure of Allah Azza wa Jal. You're very sure of the deen of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You're very, very sure of the Quran as the word of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the uncreated book sent by Rasul, sent to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All of it you're completely, hundred percent agreeing to. Yet you tell everybody else, listen, I will respect you also. I will not make fun of you just because we are not the same person. 
just because I will tell you, I will do my uh, convey the message, but then first here I'm telling her I will improve myself. So I'm not going on Facebook and complain that don't watch this and don't do that. We are here to tell ourselves. Right, uh, all of you asking about etiquaf at home, please, no fake questions here. You can, you have different forums, you please ask at that forum, right? SubhanAllah, we are here to do Iman boosters. And my idea of looking at Iman is this. I'm going to show you another perspective. You know, let me show you one more video. It's another video, very interesting. I think you'll like these uh, smaller ones. This is the last one and then we'll close this. And we'll talk about this person, individual. Very interesting again. Right? Uh, tell me two things you find very, very interesting about this particular video. Wait a minute, I'm going to share it right now. There you are. A little bit of a loose shot by Sangakkara. Just picked up the drive, but Pollock again. Using his experience, a slowish delivery, square of the wicket, and Amla makes no mistake with the catch. And it's the first time his footwork let him down. Bit lazy to it, open the blade up. And Amla, who's been there, probably the best fielder on the ground for me. Tell me what's the cricketer's name? Worked very hard this test match and has experienced the veteran right, Sean Foley finds a way to brace this partnership. And it's been a good partnership for 82 runs between these two. And the dangerous second car up. And he goes for 39. Sri Lanka, 94 for two. The one with the beard, yeah, that's the one I'm talking about, right? See what you notice now. Yeah, you're noticing something else also, isn't it? Hashim Amla, you're right, it's Hashim Amla. Yeah, Umar will do football next time. Ash Arshad, that's the answer I was looking for. Brilliant, Hashim. Right, all of you, mashallah, were fantastic. We, we will, inshallah, summarize what he's saying. All of you did two things, two sunnah. The, the sitting and drinking uh, water, you said, mashallah, I agree to that also. But something more importantly, I wanted to discuss here. Yeah, uh, sometimes we, we forget the bigger challenges or the bigger uh, sacrifices they have made. Subhanallah, yes, uh, the fact that he was sitting and drinking water, next time you see him standing, you'll criticize him. That's a, the that's a sad part of it. So stop criticizing. Somebody said Moin Ali also. He's an old cricketer. Some of you may not relate to him because he didn't play the IPL, uh, which is, mashallah, where you know your cricket is from. So only you know Hardik Pandyas and David Warners and Chris Gales. Uh, something strange about Hashim Amla was that you see what, what, what some of you really wrote beautifully is if you see, there is no logo, Castle Langer, yeah, yeah, Castle logo, yeah, this is what the beauty of it is, the South African company, and, and now, yes, Moin Ali also, South African company is, you know, you see there is a castle, so if I can anoint it, if I can use my anointer a little, you can see that South African company was sponsored by a beer company. Hashim Amla refused to endorse the beer company, he said, it's against my values, it's against my faith, I will not accept it. Isn't it amazing, subhanAllah, when someone like that can do it? It is, it is so beautiful when somebody can do like that. They, he lost a lot of money because they said if the, if the logo money is not there, we'll not give you the idea, we'll not give the money. But Hashim Amla did not bulge. He used that. This is what I'm teaching you. This is the last thing I'm teaching you today. But if you don't stand for anything, you'll fall for everything. People respected Hashim Amla for that. In fact, he got more money. More people came in because Castle Langer, they sponsored the travel money. So people chipped in. They said, we will sponsor Hashim Amla's flight ticket. We will give him money. And people poured in. But that is, yes, you know, Lukman, they have changed the sponsor. Yes, SubhanAllah, Zaman, he, I, you know, Alhamdulillah, uh, when he came to India, I did meet him, Alhamdulillah, South Africa. In fact, my brother Ashfaq spent a lot of time with him. His, his parents from Gujarat, you are right, Alhamdulillah. And, but now Zaman, he is a South African. You can't say he's not South African. This is again being very, very judgmental. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, that's very important. Umar, the sad part is he doesn't remember, right? <laughs> Only I remember. <laughs> but that is where we end our session on. Nothing can save us. Nothing can take us except Allah Azza wa Jal and making dua. Remember, oh, Yunus, you prayed Salah with Moeen Ali. I'm proud of that. Alhamdulillah, and these are good people. They're smart people there. Today, we spoke a lot about self-esteem. We spoke a lot about 
our own self identity some of the heroes you spoke about so why don't you inshallah tell me the rock moved a little bit mashallah after the last session and we will hopefully continue to move the rock a little jazakallah khair subhanallah wa bihamdi subhanaka wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik hopefully before the end of this ramadan session your rock will move in uh, remember you can drop a email to daud at sky education dot in uh, any suggestion you can end in and we are closing on time barakallah fi hamdan nihal ashraf jazakallah always nice to be with you all always nice to spend time talking i think you learned about kandura you learned about malcolm x you learned about muhammad ali hashim amla it was it was nice for me to do research when i do and send special sessions on it jazakallah everybody assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh